Praise God. Jesus bless this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is for you people 17 to 27 years old. That's finishing school. Um, just did finish high school. Um, finishing up college. Going into college. This is for you. Okay. Please share this with your students. Uh, your young people that is in, in that age group. Uh, if you have people in your family of that age. 17 to 27 years old, give or take a couple years, maybe 28 years old in college, whatever. This is for you. I told you yesterday I caught up the mistake zone, and I drew a great big uh, thing about, I drew you like a tunnel, like the road you'll be driving on yesterday's video. Wait a minute, my thing is stuck. Right there, I caught up the mistake zone. At 17 years old, you enter there, you might get a speeding ticket because you're driving too fast, and your friends is, you know, putting your friends first, and maybe you... Your friend says, take this pill, and you do, and you end up getting in a car accident, or you quit school, you're doing drugs, you're doing alcohol, um, you're not with your family at all, you're not listening, you're getting uh, a divorce. Maybe you just got married, and by the 20 years old, you're divorced, and you got a baby on the way, and sexual diseases, all this stuff is the mistake zone for 17 to 27 years old, and it will affect the rest of your life. Then over there, at Mount 27-ish, that's what you got to deal with, whatever you have created for yourself. So trying to help you, young people, uh, make some very wise decisions, okay? Hold on just a minute. There goes my tripod. It's work. Excuse me, y'all. I refuse to start this video again in Jesus' name. There we go. We're going to start off with Isaiah 12-2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. And 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So this lesson, we're going to break all these down right here. Some stuff that you guys are going to be facing. Share this with people, you guys, that are 17 to 27 years old. People you know that are getting ready to finish high school. People you know that have just finished high school, um, that's in college, going to college, or just finished college. Share these videos that I'm doing especially just for you guys, okay? So this is aimed for you to take a closer look at the mistakes and spend time, you know, thinking about each one of these in detail, okay? So it'll be like what colleges will you go to or what college will you go to? There's a list of questions here because it's going to determine your, your life course, what college you go to. It'll, it'll probably determine your life spouse even. And it will probably determine your friends depending on what college you go to. So let's start there. Most people are resigned to the fact that you just have to go through this mistake zone and you learn the hard way like a lot of us did. And, of course, most young adults box themselves in, right, by refusing to hear any advice from those of us that are older that care, okay? So, they are condemned to learn the hard way. That's a horrible way to learn, the hard way, y'all. So, honestly, adult life is a big, it's, it's, it's a big enough adjustment to go from teenage, from young to young adult, to you know, from teenager to young adult. It's a big adjustment, and there's no sense in carrying baggage that you don't have to carry, young people. There's no sense in that, okay? So let's examine each one of these major decisions that I come up with a few of them that you're going to have to face in the upcoming years and try to grasp what it is you're up against, okay? Which college you're going to go to. If you're in high school, this is probably your first major decision to conquer. My 17-year-old grandson, well, he's facing senior year next year. This coming up year, I mean. He's going to have to face these decisions. My 18-year-old grandson, he's facing these decisions right now. Okay? Um, which one? What kind? Where? You know, the college you choose, it will most likely, y'all, lead you to the person that you're going to marry. It'll most likely lead you to the career field that you, you know, go to pursue, and the friends you keep. You pick them up in the college years, okay? And this is going to determine where you live, uh, what you'll do with the rest of your life, 
who you become like, whose children you have. This will determine who your grandkids will be and who their kids will be and on and on, man. I'm talking about, whoa, man, this is some big stuff here. This is definitely a major decision that you want to get right. Which college will you go to? Okay, how about the next one? Who are you, who you going to date? That, don't you think that's a major decision who you'll date? Who you date is going to determine your testimony. It'll determine who you marry. Who you date will greatly impact the condition of your spiritual heart. Okay? What kind of person will you date? If looks are, is your primary criteria, then you're headed for a world of misery, baby. Because although I wouldn't go as so far as to tell you to marry someone ugly, no. But believe me, when you meet God's match for you, You'll think this is the best looking person on the planet. That's an easy one for God, okay? So what guidelines will you follow in your dating life? Ask yourself that question. Who will you give an account to? How will you keep from ruining your testimony? Ask yourself these questions. Will your dating life reflect Christ and help you become a better Christian? These questions will formulate the basis of, for choosing a spouse, a life's mate, and this is huge, huge, y'all. Uh, will you test yourself? Will you date a non-Christian? Other than the fact that it's very clear in the Bible, it's just common sense. If God is real and your faith is real, then your family absolutely must be founded upon eternal values. God's word, that's the blueprint, y'all, for the family and the glue that holds it together. God's word. If you don't at least have true faith in common, you're headed for a disaster, no doubt, okay? God says in Amos 3.3, 3, listen, listen, Talking about you trying to walk a Christian walk and you trying to marry somebody that's not a Christian, hoping that they become one. That's a disaster in the making. Amos 3.3 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? And 2 Corinthians 6.14 Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Somebody is going to fall. Most likely. That's what God is saying here. Don't do it. Okay? And by the way, don't fall for the trap that you can date this person and win them to Christ. Don't fall for that trap. God is very clear about a Christian not dating and un, a, a non-Christian. He's very clear. You thinking you could change that person? You're headed for a disaster, most likely. Win him to Christ, right? See him disciple to faithfulness and then date him. That's what you do. Win him to Christ first. Make sure. Make sure this person is discipled to faithfulness to God from their heart. That takes a little time. And then date that person. Then date. Don't do it while you're dating. Then date that person, okay? Very few people succeed with dating as an outreach, okay? And it's never right to do wrong to do right. You understand? That's a big deal. A lot of people fail that one right there because they go by their flesh. It means they date who they want to. They can, they can save them and it don't work out. Um, the third one I have is, what will your first job be? Your first job will determine God's true priority in your life. Your first job can help you trust God, or your first job can reveal your true spiritual character. Okay? Ask yourself, where are you going to work through your young adulthood? Where am I going to work? Most people get, you know, a small job in high school, or they get, you know, some, some kind of a job in high school. Ice cream shop, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, 7-Eleven, or something like that. Or they'll get, them, they'll get a small job that causes them to face a, 
a lot of life shaping questions like will you work on Sundays will you work on Friday to Saturday do you even know the difference of why I'm asking you that see what I mean and that's another lesson I'll just say it to you quickly the Sabbath, God said, keep it holy and don't work on it. That's Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown. That's the day God rested. He created the whole world and everything, people and everything. And on that day, he rested. Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown. It's not Sunday. Sunday is not the Sabbath. Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown is the Sabbath. Will you work on that after God told you not to? Friday at sundown and Saturday at sundown doesn't mean you can't help people. You can't fix their car or give them a ride somewhere. No, it doesn't mean that help people by, 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 by all means. But to go work at McDonald's Friday night or Saturday, God said no. No, 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 no. So many young adults get so infatuated with getting their first few paychecks. That they'll kiss church goodbye, man, for that first minimum wage the offer that comes along. They won't be in church on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. They love the sound of being able to say, I have to work. There's something very adultish about that sound, right? So, as a side note, choose right now, before you get your job, to stay in church regardless, okay? Starter jobs, they're easy to find. You know, good workers are hard to find. And God will provide better for you than you will provide for yourself. Okay? You got to keep God first and then watch him work it out. If you have a job now that requires you to miss your church on Friday or Saturday or Sunday, whatever days we have church, you come to church, talk to your manager. You know, get your parents and, and, and my, your pastor's advice. Get your church leader's advice. But talk to your parents. Talk to your, your, your job. Put God to... Put, put, you know, go ahead and give God a chance. Let him, let him prove himself to you. Because he will. Stepping out in faith is easier now than it, than it will ever be. And you'll need the valuable foundation of faith for bigger decisions in your future. So in other words, learn to trust God... With, with your, I don't know, $6.50 an hour. And it'll be easier to trust him with the $80,000 a year, okay? When your kids will be watching you to see how you're going to handle the family situation. Are you going to fail your family or keep them together? You know, so you got to put your faith in God when it comes to raising a family. Because that's the next step down the road for you guys. People who refuse to trust God. When they're young, they never develop the foundation of faith that they need when, they're, when these bigger storms and these harder tests come their way. They, they're swimming in doubt. So do you remember David and Goliath, y'all? I'm sure Steffi and Dave and them told you about David. I know I have. About David and Goliath. David trusted God when the bear and the lion, which made it easier for him to trust God with Goliath, okay? The same principle will work for you. On your jobs, will you stand for right? Will you? Will you laugh at dirty jokes and accept invitations to wild parties? Will you? Will you make them think that you're not cool enough if you don't go to these wild parties and do these drugs and drink these drinks and stuff and smoke these cigarettes and stuff? You think that you, you will you give in to them making you feel like you ain't cool unless you do that stuff that's deadly? They're the ones that's not cool. You stand your ground because you will have a family. Your kids are going to be watching you. They're going to be saying, wow, man, my mom or my dad is so strong. They always chose what was right. Don't ever let any human or humans tell you that what you're doing isn't good enough or big enough if you don't do something that's wrong. That's a demon working through that person. Will you be credible? Will you be a credible testimony for Jesus Christ? Or will you quietly hide your Christianity for the myth of acceptance? Will you let your friends know, I serve Jesus Christ, man. I, I love God. 
Or will you try to hide them? What will you do for money, y'all? What will you do for money? What will you do with your money? This is, this is questions you have to think about between you and the Lord and the rest of your future. Because if you get greedy with your money now, you'll be greedy forever. And the people, greedy people don't make it back to God. Will you do what's right? Will you stick some of your money away to try to save it for get your house paid off, get your cars paid off, uh, start saving money to get your school paid off, start saving money after that to go ahead and start raising your family and have little accounts set up for your kids so that they're not struggling should something happen to you? It's a lot. It's a load. It's a responsibility. But it's time. You're at the age now of responsibility to start being responsible. These values and more start coming into focus with the starting of your first job. And it's going to determine a wide variety of details about your adult life. you got to think about this, y'all. Those of you that, that, that get, give a crap, you're going to listen to what I'm telling you. And you need to think about this stuff, not just today, every single day, one day at a time. Think about this stuff. Before you go out on a date, I asked you number two, who will you date? Think about that. What if, what if I accidentally got this person pregnant? Or what if they got me pregnant? Would I want to spend eternity with this person? Do I even know? Because people change. Every, every five years as they get a little older, they change. into. By the time you're 30 years old, you're a different person, man, than you was when I dated you at 16. You are not the same person. So you guys got to think about this stuff. Now, we're trying to help you here. All right, number four, what will you drive? Will you have a car soon? In my grandson's case, he has one, and we're working on that with him, and he's being very patient, and he's letting us work with him, make sure everything's in the morning order, it's working good, spend time on the road together with somebody, with one of us. You know, just let us work it out with you, man. Don't just jump out there. You know, don't do that. Will God provide you for the rest of you? To buy a car? What kind of car? How much should you pay for that car? Do you even know that? You know, what interest rate are you going to get? And how will you know if you got a good deal or not? How would you know if you got ripped off and you got to pay $300 a month for the next 15 years? You know what I'm saying? Or they'll come and repossess your car. It happens every day. How much money will you need? To keep that car up and running because they're not cheap. And everybody else can't afford to, 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 to fend your car. we got to fend our own cars. Can you pay your car insurance? Can you, are you sticking away money to pay your car insurance? Can you pay that? How, how are you going to treat your car? Are you going to take care of it? How are you going to drive it? You know, are you going to speed it and gas it and, and try to do donuts and stuff and tear it up and, and put other people's life at risk as well as your own? What are you going to do with this car? On and on the list goes. So, and I'll tell you, the world is quietly awaiting your answer because there's other people you'd be affected by you driving. I don't want you to be scared to drive, but I want y'all to remember it's not just you, it's other people around you as well. So many young people y'all's age now is starting to go out there and take a drink, a beer or something, and think it's okay to get behind the wheel, and it's not. They end up killing people. Teenagers end up in prison for the rest of their life because they took a drink and got in a wreck where the person died. Now they're in prison for murder forever. Do you understand y'all? So drinking and driving is out. If you, I prefer you not drink, but if you're going to always, I don't care who gets mad about it. It doesn't matter. Call a cab, call a cab or call a family member. Don't matter what time it is. Call the police department. Doesn't matter what time it is, but don't you ever get behind that wheel because you will be putting not just your life, but somebody else's life at risk. And then you will end up in prison for life. Do you understand me? Whether you meant to do it or not, that one drink tells the judge you meant to do it. 
You knew what you did when you took that drink and you knew what you did when you got behind the wheel. So don't do it. That's a warning from God right there. Don't do it. So like I said, the world's waiting on your answer. And by, by your answer, we'll know what kind of person that you are. If you drive recklessly, people will rightly judge you as an immature and unprepared for real responsibility. People will tell their kids they can't hang out with you, man. You'll be a statistic in someone's, you know, message or illustration in someone's, in someone's parental lecture of who not to be like. Is that what you want? Is that what you really want? Really? Do you want people to look at you and say, stay away from that kid, man. Stay away from that, that dude right there. Is that worth a few donuts? In, in, in the, in the, in the uh, work parking lot or a drag race on the edge of town? No. But it happens all the time in the mistake zone, y'all. It happens all the time. Okay? We're going to pick this back up. I'm going to carry this out with you probably throughout the week. Just, just be looking. You know, you people, share this, y'all, with people who are 17 years old to 27. Share this with them. Okay, and we were going to pick it up tomorrow. Where do I leave off? Uh, what car are you going to drive? So that's where we left off, and that's where I'm going to pick up the next video. We're right there. We did four. We did one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I probably got about two or three more videos of this to do with y'all as far as talking about this anyway. So I want you guys to really think about this. I'm trying to help you guys, okay? We care. I don't want to see anybody making a dumb mistake and spending the rest of your life in the state penitentiary behind bars because you made a dumb choice. Don't make the dumb choice, okay? All right. God bless you guys. I will see you guys. We have the barn. Come to the barn, jesusdoers.com. Look, look for the link on the big red barn. The days and hours are there. God bless you guys.